G'day YouTubers, Pirate Pete coming to you this evening from Circular Quay down at Sydney Harbour. You can see in the background there we've got the Sydney Opera House um, just being nicely lit up by the evening sunset and strolling into picture one of Sydney's ferries just uh, coming in to say hello. Alrighty, so hopefully everyone's had a a pretty good break if you're like me you're just coming back from your uh, holidays over the Christmas New Year period and uh, about to get back into the work um, routine for the for the new year uh, hopefully it proves to be a productive and prosperous one I thought I'd um, do this video talking about my 2016 um, I, I not really buying strategy but basically what I'm buying um, in 2016 so um, here, in, here on camera in front of you pretty much represents what I'd be looking to um, buy up this year as my bread and butter purchases I think somebody put it that way so um, in terms of bars I'd be looking to get some 10 ounce bars I've got a preference to get the Perth Mint bars um, and there is a reason for that I've I have got sort of some cheaper bars that I can get access to there um, just generic silver bars like this one here um, they're only a little bit cheaper they're not that much cheaper but um, the disadvantage I found with this one was um, when it comes time to to offload it back to a dealer um, the only dealer who's going to accept this generic one was the one who actually sold it to me so the Perth, Perth Mint I found any dealer will will buy back um, they'll pay cash and I'll get um, spot price for them so um, collecting bars, the Perth Mint bars definitely top of the list for me for this year. And in terms of coins, what I'm looking for is um, young coins, so 2016 mintages. I've got a couple of different types that I've got my, my eye on. So um, this roll here is just full of the 2016 Kookaburra. So I think most of you have already got your hands on some of these um, so um, you've seen this before but um, out of all the kookaburras this one is by far my favorite design so um, I'll be I'll be I guess buying this one up each month um, maybe a few rolls um, at a time but um, this one here will represent a large part of my purchases for this year um, it's just a great looking design And the other one I'll be looking for in the coin is again from Perth, um, the Lunar Monkeys. So both the bullion coins, I'll be looking for um, low premiums in, in the bullion form. And um, my thinking here in getting these young coins, 2016 coins, is um, even though they come with a, 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 some premium over spot um, at present, just looking at past performance for these Luna and Kookaburra series coins, the premiums seem to really come on in, in years three and four. So I guess the plan is if um, past performance is an indicator, not always is, but if, if it does work out, then I'm expecting by years three and four that these coins will reach probably their maximum premiums. And that's when I'd look to um, sell them off and... Uh, reinvest it into whatever looks good at the time so probably around 2020 I'd be looking to offload these um, so that that's pretty much what I'd be looking to buy up um, as much as I'd love to buy up more of these um, the premiums on these are just too high for me to invest in as a bread and butter sort of purchase but um, these ones here I'd just pick up as a, as a one-off special to spoil myself really but otherwise these um, these represent what I'd be looking to buy up this year so while uh, gold still trades at around 75 to 80 times um, the price of silver um, I'm going to continue to look at silver as a proxy for gold so I'll be biased heavily towards silver this year um, or if, as long as that ratio remains that way but um, it looks like it's going to be that way at least for the first part of this year and um, I think um, what I mean by proxy I'll, uh, I'll explain on the next chart. Alrighty so I'm asking the question is silver a good proxy for gold? So in other words um, if I was to invest in silver am I likely to make a similar return as if I was to invest in gold 
Um, and in order to make that sort of analysis or um, conclusion, what I've done is I've pulled out the, um, the gold price and the silver price data um, for the last... Um, well, for the last 40 years and I've looked at it over a couple of different time frames. So here in this first chart I'm looking at um, the data between 2008 and present. Um, I've got uh, all um, inflation taken out of it so it's in constant 2015 US dollar terms and what I've done is I've plotted on this axis um, the gold prices versus the silver prices. Each of those dots represents um, a particular day in that time series and uh, the black line you can see is a line of best fit so it's a regression analysis um, using a linear model um, the uh, the R squared number is the correlation between the price of silver and the price of gold so the closer this R squared number in red is to is to one um, the more uh, related the two prices are and therefore a better indicator um, of uh, silver being a proxy for gold. So um, when I've done the analysis over 2008 to present um, I've got a score there which is um, just under 85%. Uh, what that means is 85% of the movement in uh, silver's price is explained by the or is related to the uh, movement in the price of gold. So it's a very very strong correlation uh, between the two. So I'm pretty comfortable um, on those figures there that uh, silver is a very good strong proxy for gold. I don't think that's much of a surprise to, uh, to anyone who's been looking at precious metals for some time. But uh, for the newbies who are asking themselves that question, from a statistical point of view, um, there's a very strong relationship between the two, certainly between the periods 2008 to present. Um, by comparison, I think drug companies when they're uh, testing their, uh, their results uh, for, um, uh, I guess, new treatments for, for symptoms, um, anything over 75% usually gets uh, a bit of a pass mark from, uh, from the drug administrators that uh, the drug is um, effective. Uh, so an eight, a score of near 85% is, is very strong correlation indeed. And here in this next chart, I'm just looking at um, the same um, plot of data between silver and gold prices, again in constant 2015 US dollar terms, so inflation taken out of the data. And uh, it just got it uh, since 75, 1975 to present. And uh, in that 40 year time horizon, um, it's still got a very strong correlation. So just under, what is that, 63? So it's 62, an R-squared score of 62, uh, 0.62, sorry. So 62% of the price in silver explained, is explained by the price or the movement in the price of gold. So um, it's obviously since 2008 much stronger correlated, um, but in the last 40 years still very strongly correlated nonetheless. So I'm pretty confident using those two time series um, in concluding that silver is a very strong proxy for gold and uh, if you take into account currently that uh, that gold is uh, what is that between 75 it bubbles around between 75 and 80 times the price of silver so in other words one ounce of gold will buy approximately 75 to 80 ounces of silver today um, on those sort of ratios I, I think gold's a bit more expensive or a bit too expensive compared to silver um, certainly when you compare that in, uh, in uh, I guess, the history over the last 100 years. Um, gold's a bit too expensive for, uh, versus silver for me, so I'm comfortable accumulating silver as a proxy for gold uh, today. Now, if you like this video and you'd like to see more just like it, why don't you show your support by joining the crew and we'll explore gold and silver together.